The new trailer for Pet Cemetery suggests one major change from the novel and one major change from the 1989 movie. If you haven't seen trailer number two yet, I'd recommend not watching it. You can just watch this Things You Miss video and I'll tell you when to leave if you want to avoid spoilers. Deal? Deal. Let's roll that intro. So the trailer opens with the mother of the family, Rachel, telling her husband that their daughter Ellie discovered a charming landmark in the woods, and then it shows Ellie wandering around the pet cemetery by herself. This is not how it goes down in the book at all. In the book, their neighbor Judd Crandall takes the entire Creed family to the pet cemetery to introduce them to the woods behind their house. Maybe that does still happen because we do see both of them there together later in the trailer, and trailers have been known to lie to us in the past. But when we do see Ellie supposedly arriving at the pet cemetery, there's a little picture frame in the bottom right corner with a photo of a parrot. When they first visit the pet cemetery in the book, Ellie's father, Louis, notices a grave plot labeled Polynesia, and thinks to himself that Polynesia would have been a parrot if he remembers his Dr. Doolittle correctly, and would have squawked her last Pollywanna cracker in the summer of 1953. King also describes Polynesia's grave when Lewis returns to the burial ground towards the end of the book, and when he steps over the ragged chunk of board that marks Polynesia's final resting place, it kind of represents him going past the land of the dead. Also, if you go frame by frame while the head's stones are flashing on screen, you can read this one labeled Trixie, Kilt on the Highway, which is also one of the grave markers that Lewis reads when first visiting the pet cemetery in the book, where he also sees the death date, September 15th, 1968. So I think it's pretty cool that they're referencing some of the pet cemetery's animal inhabitants in the movie. Nice little easter eggs. One thing that's included in the movie that's not in the book is this mask left on one of the graves, and these kids wearing the masks as they parade their deceased pets to the cemetery. There is a story that Judd Crandall passes down in the book about how the kids would bring their pets down the forest path to the cemetery. Sometimes the pet owner would go alone, like when Judd buried his dog Spot, and other times they would have more of a funeral procession type of thing. I specifically remember Judd telling of an argument between two kids back in the day, getting into a debate about who got to hold onto the casket. But the animal masks and instruments were never a part of the book. There are some things that are mentioned in the book, but after being absent from the 80s film, have returned for the new adaptation. Let's roll the clip. It's not some campfire story. Saw these in the trees up there. They're warnings. The local tribes carved them before they fled. Lewis researches the spiral in this book called Modern History of Eastern Native Tribes. The caption here says, The pictograph of the spiral was found carved into the trees of the forests of Maine, as a warning to others or a way of warding off the evil spirits. What is this evil spirit? It's right there, the Wendigo, an Algonquian mythological creature. In the case of Pet Cemetery, it's referred to as a Mi'kmaq legend. The Wendigo has ties to cannibalism and greed in times of famine, and resides in the northeast region of the US. Some versions of the legend say a human who craves an other man's flesh is cursed to become a Wendigo. But the Wendigo in Stephen King's novel is more of a deity who stalks the ground of Ludlow, Maine, where the story takes place. Judd tells Lewis that the Mi'kmaq tribe stopped using their burial ground because the ground had been soured by the Wendigo. He also blames the Wendigo for causing bad things to happen in town, telling Lewis he believes that the Wendigo possessed him to show Lewis the Mi'kmaq burial ground. Legend has it that if the creature touches you, it can turn you into a cannibal. The pictures shown in the trailer show off the Wendigo's cannibalistic side, and its form, which matches the typical depiction of the Wendigo with a human body capped by the head or horns of a stag. The spiral is also mentioned in the book, but it's more of a sign of the Wendigo's intervention and an introduction of ideas that go against nature. When Lewis visits Pleasant View Cemetery, he finds himself thinking about the graves at the Pet Cemetery. He refers to the spiral as the oldest sign of power in the world, man's oldest symbol of that twisty bridge that may exist between the world and the gulf. Lewis finds himself absentmindedly drawing a spiral pattern in the dirt while he's thinking, and erases it before leaving. Then, later on, when he returns to the burial ground, he notices that the rocks have fallen in such a way to give the appearance of a gigantic spiral, giving us the idea that a greater presence is at work. On one of the other pages of the book, someone has drawn in their own spiral and a pentagram. I'm guessing that Lewis finds his hands drawing these symbols without realizing it, just as he drew the spiral on the dirt in the book. Judd Crandall is seen wearing a hat throughout several scenes of the trailer that says Levette Motor Oil. This might be an oil company based near Fort Levette in Maine, which is named after Christopher Levette, one of the earliest settlers of the New England area. I think that Judd wearing this hat means he represents the white man laying down a path into Native American territory that they have no business meddling in. Judd is the one to show Lewis about how to get to the Mi'kmaq burial ground and introduce him to the power that it holds. Native American curses are a common theme in King's stories. And speaking of King's writing, it looks like there's a little reference to Carrie 
with a hand reaching out of the ground and grabbing Lewis's arm. That's not something from the book, so I guess it's part of Lewis's dream. One thing that was not shown in the first trailer that has been revealed here in the second one is Zelda, Rachel's sister who passed away when they were young from severe spinal meningitis. The thought of Zelda haunts Rachel for the rest of her life, and she even has visions of her as an adult, which appears to be what's going on in this scene, and it looks pretty horrifying. We also get a better look at Lewis's encounter with Victor Pascal, a university student that dies under Lewis's care during his first day of work, and tries to warn him about the evil that lies beyond the pet cemetery. In the book, he was hit by a car while out jogging. It looks like they've changed things up a bit in this new movie because he's not wearing running shorts, and something is sticking out of his neck. Can't really tell what. I don't know why this change was made, and that kind of leads me to my next point. However, if you don't want any spoilers, this is the end of the line for you. Remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring the death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Go watch this video. If you're still here, you may have already thought what I'm thinking. That Pascal's injury seems to just be changed for change's sake. We won't know for sure until we see the movie, but as of right now, it certainly seems that way. You've probably also noticed that the trailer seems to suggest that Ellie is going to be the one struck down by the truck, as opposed to her brother, Gage. Like I said before, trailers do lie sometimes, but it does seem like Ellie is seen running into the road before the truck comes. There are Ellie-sized footprints on the stairs, and Ellie tracks mud into the house and horrifies her mother with her appearance. And then, as Rachel is watching over Gage, something pops up and scares her, and it appears to be Ellie. At the end of the trailer, a girl with a cat mask attacks Judd, which may or may not be Ellie, but a lot of signs seem to point to her being the one that Lewis has to bury in the cursed burial ground. So why was this changed in the remake? In my personal opinion, this would have been a fun change if it had been for shock value. Fans of the originals would go into the movie expecting it to be Gage who is killed, making it that much more shocking when Ellie is unexpectedly struck down. But now that they've gone and spoiled it in the trailer, that won't be the case at all, which just makes me think that this is just another example of change for the sake of change. Now maybe there is some reason that the roles of Ellie and Gage are flipped in this film, and I won't make my final judgments until I have seen the movie, but if they are just changing it for no reason, then some of the brilliance of the story is going to be lost. For example, the contrast between Lewis's first trip, where he struggles to carry Gage in the baby backpack, and his second trip, where he easily carries Gage's corpse in the middle of the night, is going to be lost because it's not like he'll be carrying Ellie during the first trip in the movie. And the the psychological trauma that Gage's death puts on Ellie in the book won't be there with Gage in the movie because he's just not old enough to fully comprehend it like Ellie would have. We will just have to wait to see how everything shakes out, but let me know what you think of these changes so far, and make sure you're subscribed to CZ's World, and ring the death bell so you don't miss out on Things You Missed episodes on the 1989 Pet Cemetery, its sequel, and more Pet Cemetery related content coming soon to this channel. I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.